Hello and welcome to Stand in the Gap. I'm Sam Rohr and I'll be joined as normal by co-host Pastor Isaac Crockett. On this program, we cover ongoing issues of cultural consequence, often uh, without easy answers. And we do it from a biblical worldview perspective. The reason for that is because we believe that the Bible contains all the answers we need to address every issue before us. In our nation today, we face major challenges arising from all sides, economic, religious, educational, family and marriage, life and death, political and moral. Each of these are seemingly confronting us almost simultaneously, and it can be overwhelming. With instruction from Scripture, however, uh, even the most confusing of issues can come into focus. One issue that actually incorporates all of these areas, plus more, is the issue of an impending one world government, or in the words of George Bush 41, George the Elder, a new world order. Listen, if you would, to just a short clip of President Bush from 1991, where he describes just briefly this phenomenon that he supported. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind, peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Such is a world worthy of our struggle and worthy of our children's future. Well, in this clip you just saw, then President Bush clearly outlined his vision for this new world order, as he phrased it, that he positioned as something the whole world would actually want, would actually expand the American experiment in freedom, and would solve all of the world's problems. He and every president since him, except President Trump, has aggressively attempted to advance this new world order using the power, the finances, and influence of the United States to do so most of the time without the knowledge or the informed consent of the American people. The response of people to this concept of a new government has been mixed. Some have pursued it with vigor. Others opposed it for many reasons, with many because it resembles what the Bible refers to as a supra-government, a to arise in the end days, run by the Antichrist himself. Now, our theme for this week and next in part one and part two will revolve around what is meant by the New World Order or global government. Our theme is this, advancing global government, the Great Reset. We're going to define the term, identify the who and the what, the where and the why, and the when and the how. Today, help us as we, to help us walk through this subject area, we're going to invite in, in just a moment, Leo Homan. He's an investigative journalist, author, a longtime writer for WorldNet Daily, and author of a 2017 book entitled Stealth Invasion. And with that, let me welcome to the program right now, Leo Homan. Leo, thank you for being with us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on today, Sam. Uh, Leo, you are one of the finest investigative uh, journalists that are out there. I want to say that publicly because I've come to highly respect you. Uh, On this theme, you are an expert. Let's get right into it. I'd like you to define this concept of new world order or world government. And and, and, uh, so we're established as we discuss it going into these two programs. And also address this a little bit. George Bush, that clip I played, he spoke about a long time ago. Is this concept of a new world order, a world government, however you define it to be, is it actually something new or is it something that's been around for a long time? Sam, I believe it's been around since the dawn of uh, Satan's release onto the earth. We saw this going all the way back to the Tower of Babel when uh, nations were enticed to build their own utopian society uh, without God. There's nothing wrong with, you know, trying to improve the world, trying to improve conditions. uh, But when you keep God on the outside and you try to do it only with man's wisdom, that's when the problems come in. And that's where we see uh, exactly where we're going with the quote unquote new world order clip that you played from George Herbert Walker Bush. And it's interesting that that same phrase has been picked up right on down the line from every president 
uh, you know, it was it was mimicked. It was repeated um, by President Clinton. It was picked up by um, Joe Biden in 2013 when Obama was president. He spoke to the Export Import Bank in 2013 and said that we need to move on to a new global roadmap. We need to rewrite the global rules of the road, he said, and he called it a new world order. And so uh, flip forward to 2020 and it gets rebranded as the Great Reset. And we see this being pushed out of the World Economic Forum and it's being backed by the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the United Nations, the British royal family, Prince Charles is, is all over this, speaking about the need for a, quote, great reset. Um, it's really astonishing, and it amounts to a huge Madison Avenue PR campaign, in my opinion, just rebranding this new world order as the great reset. Okay, and Leo, that's a great setup. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. That's, uh, we're gonna get right into this now and begin to walk into more detail. We're gonna come back, we'll pick up with Leo Homan as we, dis as we discuss really this theme today that I've put before us, and that is this, uh, advancing the global government, the great reset. We'll be back in just a moment. Truth, flexible or permanent, the Bible ancient history or powerfully relevant culture a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs the pastor commentator or frontline combatant every day american pastors network speaks to these questions where and when they matter with hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating. Informing. Equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Welcome back to our program, and today we're talking about uh, the New World Order, and to some that might uh, sound spooky or like a conspiracy theory, but to most of us we've heard words like that around a lot, and uh, so we're talking about the Great Reset, and to talk to us and help explain this we have our friend Leo Homan, and Leo, thanks again for being on. You already started introducing this. We looked at the speech by George H.W. Bush where he talked about it. Um, and so I just, you know, as we get into this thing, it's, I mean, it's so complex and uh, it is sometimes kind of frightening or scary and it has led to books and movies and all kinds of theories, you know, being propagated out there. So to get some truth, shine some biblical light, you know, on what's going on and some facts, um, can we start with just identifying who some of these major players are? We, we've mentioned presidents already, you know, President H.W. Bush. Um, but to, could we kind of go maybe from that time period, from the 90s forward uh, right now, and just look at some of the other individuals or organizations that are leading us into this, um, Bush called it a new world order. I think today we're seeing it called other things like the Great Reset, as our title uh, alludes to. Who are we looking for? To, that, that are, who are the people saying these things? Basically, Isaac, you're looking for anyone uh, in the establishment. By that, I mean uh, the media, the mainstream media. Time Magazine, for instance, just devoted an entire issue to the Great Reset. It was on its cover. They're pushing this out big time. Uh, it's being pushed out through our university systems and our schools. Our school systems have been grooming children over the last decade or, or decade, decade and a half to be, quote, global citizens, not, not citizens of the United States, okay? Global citizens. Uh, we see the consolidation of all industries over the last 20 years. We, we seem to be ignoring the antitrust laws. We just, we think bigger is better. That's because bigger the bigger that companies get, the, the more consolidated that the industries get, the greater, the more easily they are to be controlled. And so uh, you see the establishment already buying into this idea of, okay, 
let's not think about America first. Let's think about the globe first. The Vatican has bought into it. If you read uh, Pope Francis's latest encyclical, he talks about the need to no longer uh, be ruled by national sovereignty, that we need global cooperation. Again, bigger is better. And they have a template for all of these uh, regions. They're trying to de de emphasize nations and emphasize regional government, which will eventually be expanded into one big, huge global government. Uh, and Leo, um, when we're talking right in this segment, uh, the, uh, the who and the what, you're identifying a lot of the who. I've, you used the word establishment. I've often used the word, uh, the establishment, and I divided them into the religious establishment and the political establishment. You talk about the Vatican, the Pope, the religious right. establishment. Uh, but then, then, but then there is the uh, uh, there are the Marxists that are a part of all of this. There are globalists. I would often there, it would view them, and then there are Islamists. I've tended to put all of them together because they seem to work. Um, comment on that if you would. But then, from the what perspective, go here. What is it? What common elements of ideology? What common? goals. What is it that pulls these globalist minded individuals that no longer want national borders and national sovereignty and no longer national citizens, but as you were describing world citizens, identify some of the what that pulls these disparate groups together in to this effort to implement what would be ultimately a one world government. Well, the who, uh, let's start with that, Sam. You mentioned the Marxists and the Islamists. These are nothing but uh, battering rams that the global elites are using to wear down what's left of uh, patriotic, God-first America. Uh, we in America, our tradition is that we get our rights, our, our rights are natural rights or inalienable rights, meaning they come from God. Uh, and they cannot be taken away by a, a rogue government. But that's what we're dealing with as far as the what, uh, when we talk about the Great Reset, which in my estimation would be more clearly defined as the Great Transformation. They want to transform our government away from the America first, God first uh, themes that we were founded upon and put us under a a man-centered, centrally controlled, centrally planned, centrally managed economy and social system. And it's, it's the Marxists and the Islamists, I don't know how long they will survive because they are being used right now to, to wear us down as battering rams, as I said, because the problem is the EU and most of the Western world has already bought into this system. The Europe, the, the European Union is completely globalist. That's why you see Joe Biden what does he want to do? He wants to come in and do a, a, the same thing that the EU has done with regard to COVID. He wants to do another lockdown. He wants a nationally mandated mask law. He wants to uh, 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 do away with the First Amendment, do away with the Second Amendment. We will become more like the European Union. The problem with bringing in the Great Reset is America is divided. Uh, they need to get this half of America that still adheres to these godly values. They need to crush us. They need to crush us into the dirt. And, and I think that's why they're pushing us towards a clash of uh, uh, perhaps a, a civil war. I hope that's not the case. And then, you know, the old Illuminati saying was out of chaos order. So out of chaos order. And that, I think, is the strategy to bring this last country, America, into the loop of this new world order and to crush that half of America that is resisting it. So, Leo, as, as we look at this idea of out of chaos order and you've pointed out, you know, many of those who are on the side of the globalists and whether they're being used, as you, you, know, you said, as a, like a battering ram, or whether they're the ones kind of planning the chessboard and, and using others as pawns. Uh, you, you referred to a, a them versus us sort of situation and about a civil war or you know, a clashing, a chaos. Who are they clashing against? You, you've somewhat identified you know, God-fearing folks, but who, who are maybe the individuals, who are some of the groups 
that they would like to see you know, be done with so that they could come right in and, and take over with these central you know, governments and regimes that they're looking for? That's a great question, Isaac. Uh, I think to answer it, we just need to look in the mirror. Hmm. Stand in the gap would be one of those on the list. And, uh, you know, we hear uh, since this election uh, turnout, which was extremely divided, 71 million Americans voted for Donald Trump and the America first agenda that he espouses. We don't want to go into a global agenda. We want policies that benefit America and, and, can, and retain our inalienable God-given rights. So, uh, you know, this, this is the people that they need to crush. And in order to do that, I, I don't think they can do it just over a four-year uh, administration of Joe Biden. I think they're driving us towards something bigger, something uh, more chaotic. Um, and, you know, they're, they're making lists. AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, tweeted last week, right after the election, and Joe Biden was uh, announced illegally, in my opinion, as the president-elect, before all the votes were counted, the media declared him, coronated him, the president-elect, and he is the representative of the new world order. We've already established that. And AOC went on Twitter, and she wasn't alone, by the way. They, we continue to get more of these leftists coming out and announcing that we need to have an enemies list. We need to be making a list and checking it twice and hold these people who supported Trump accountable for their crimes. And these are the words and this is the rhetoric they're using, people. And so it's time to wake up. This is not going to be business or politics as usual. We have an enemy and this enemy is ruthless. Leo, let's pick up on it just a little bit before we get into the what. Uh, you've already described some of that, but uh, as far as those that are opposed, now you didn't bring it in, but I'm going to put it on the table. In a broader sense, would you agree that it's not just uh, the 71 million Americans that voted in this case in the last November 3rd election for the president, but it's really a biblical, it's those who hold a biblical worldview, uh, worldview. in a broader sense, a Judeo-Christian worldview. Can we not put as an enemy, perhaps, of the globalist uh, Israel and its return to the land and uh, put some of that, so from a broader perspective, build in some of those ideologies, just, just so we are clear on it, that would stand in opposition to the ideology of a godless, atheistic, man-centered worldview that has as its goal a one-world government. So comment on that if you would. Well, Sam, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, the 71 million you're right, they, they won't all stand. If the pressure gets turned up like we anticipate, it will only be the traditional Bible-believing Christians, maybe some Orthodox Jews, who will resist, who will refuse to bend the knee to this beast system that they want to set up. And that's what it is, folks. Whether God may give us more time, we don't know, but it's staring us in the face. And, and when push comes to shove, it's only going to be the Bible-believing Christians and, and some devout Orthodox Jews, uh, mainly, who will stand. There'll be some others who stand with us, but not many. Um, and so that is, what, uh, that, that is who they have in the target sites. And, uh, and, and, and Leo, that, that was very clear. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that you're, you're picking this up. What we're describing right now, and the reason that we wanted to bring this issue forward is because it is real. Uh, the push towards a global governance has been in the news for a long time. It's been in uh, various aspects of implementation for a long time. And it has come front and center in this most recent November 3rd election. And at the time of the recording of this program, uh, these elements are not worked out. It's going to be working itself out in the months ahead of us as we go into 2021 and beyond uh, for a lot of reasons. We want to establish that so you all are aware at this moment. Now, we're going to break away. We're going to come back and we're going to come back and ask uh, Leo to give his comments on 
uh, if you're just picking this up right now, why it, why it should be, why it should be that you should be interested in this subject, not run away from it, not ignore it, but be interested in it and then respond to it. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of WBPH Philadelphia, positively different television. Welcome back to Staying in the Gap, and uh, Sam and I are talking with our friend Leo Homan about uh, what is going on with uh, this great reset, with this idea, we've used terms like the New World Order, globalism, all of these sort of things. And so Leo, uh, we're, we're going to be on again next week and go into more detail of why and, you know, and getting into you know, some of these focused details on that, but just as we conclude this program today, uh, there are people watching who have heard about this before. And uh, some of them, you know, are being enlightened. You're telling them things that maybe they haven't heard before. Uh, but I think we've all seen, we've all talked about a lot of what's going on, this push towards this one world government or new world order or a global reset. And some of them are saying, okay, it's never going to happen. Or, well, this has been going on since the beginning, you know, since ancient times. Different kings and emperors have sought for this. It hasn't happened. I'm not really going to worry about it. I'm not really going to care, but I'm not going to do anything about it because there's nothing I can do if I wanted to. And it's, you know, it'll probably go away again. It kind of ebbs and flows. What could you tell uh, those watching right now as, as to why this is important and why it's important for us as Bible believing Christians, as people who love our freedom, why we should care and why it's so important? Isaac, the <laughs> You just really set that up wonderfully. You, you're spot on, I think, with regard to the attitude of so many conservatives and so many conservative Christians, this dismissive attitude that, oh, that's never going to happen. And if it does, it'll be, you know, 500 years from now. We're just nowhere close to the scenario that the Bible so clearly spells out where we'll have this, you know, evil one world government trying to beat us into submission. But I would just say to them that you're not pay they're not paying attention. Uh, we need to pay attention to the words of our enemy, the enemy of our souls, who speaks through these globalists. It's written in to the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 Sustainable Development Goals that are part of the Agenda 2030 uh, program put out by the United Nations and signed on to by President Obama in 2015, along with uh, almost every other country. Along came President Trump and disrupted all of that. Uh, but one of the things that they mentioned prime, pre, so centrally in that document is that this is a plan for all of mankind, all countries, every corner of the globe. You don't get to opt out of it. The exact words in the document are, no person will be left behind. Think about that. The United Nations is telling us that they're in their plan for the world, spelled out in Agenda 2030 and Agenda 21 before that, no person shall be left behind. And so you don't get a choice. You can't hide from it. And so the sooner that you acknowledge it, and deal with it within your own personal spirit and within your own family, and, and hopefully our churches are waking up to this, the sooner that we can have a plan to stand strong and resist it. And Leo, we're going to stop it right there. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. This matter you can't avoid. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. It is coming. The question is, how do we respond for it? These programs, 
this one, part one, and next week. Don't miss next week. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more about now the why, and we'll fill in further details so that you can be prepared. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you're a Christian, if you love freedom, you do need to understand and prepare. And God tells us what to do. We'll talk about that, but we do need to be prepared. Join us next week again right here on this program. Thank you for watching today. And pray for us, partner with us in your prayers, in your finances, so that we can continue on this station.